you may expect to see a return to all your favorite sequels and blockbusters. It certainly seems to be a wonderful and positive day for the movie industry. As one of the most beloved performers of all time, Johnny Depp is all prepared to appear on your screens. Aha! And that's not all. A new beginning is just around the corner, for none other than Underworld, thanks to a reboot. Isn't it simply a wonderful day, you guys? And because there is so much going on in the movie industry right now, allow me to provide you with the specifics of everything that is occurring right away. Let's begin, shall we? Also, now might be a good time to double-check the security of all your doors, as Saw is back, ladies and gentlemen. Producers Mark Burke and Oren Cools have stated that they intend to continue the Saw franchise after the release of Saw 10. This time, the upcoming blockbuster, Saw 10, which serves as both a prequel and a sequel. Fans will get to witness Tobin Bell, John Kramer, who will reveal the origins of the personal grudge that shaped him into the iconic Jigsaw. And trust me, it'll be nothing but exciting. Cools also said during an interview that the prequel will cast John Kramer in a different light and that there are already plans in place for future installments beyond Saw 10. Not to mention, John Kramer, played by Tobin Bell, is an essential character in the Saw films, and the fact that he was killed in Saw 3 made this a problem. The guy has since been seen in flashbacks and recorded footage, but it is unclear whether or how he will return in future Saw installments. Also, we don't know if John Kramer will show up in the next Saw movie. But one thing's for sure, your worst nightmare is coming, and it's going to be 10 times scarier than before. Not to mention, the date of September 29, 2023, has been scheduled for the theatrical premiere of Saw 10 by Lionsgate. It might seem like retirement is his next best choice. John Wick appears to take his last breath on the steps of the Secure Corps in Paris, after finally defeating the High Table. But guess what? He really wanted it. You see, after making all these movies, Reeves feels exhausted, even at the best of times, due to his commitment to the stonework and performance. The man had reached his breaking point by the time work on Chapter 4 began, and Iwanek later admitted that Reeves had begged for Wick to be definitively murdered at the end of the film. Iwanek also told Collider's Christina Radish during an interview that they originally wanted to make The Continental a prequel miniseries, but since it's a movie and John Wick is a legend, they hampered for 90%. In other words, Peacock has already aired the first episode of The Continental, and I think you should definitely give it a watch. Besides that, the cinematic universe of John Wick is going to be expanded with a spin-off film called Bell Arena, which is going to investigate the dangerous world of talented dancers and assassins. The combination, I tell you. Now, as per reports, fans have been reassured by the film's director, Len Wiseman, that the production of the movie will continue as planned, despite strikes that have occurred in the industry. Meanwhile, John Wick, the legendary character played by Keanu Reeves, will have a position similar to that of a mentor in the upcoming film, which he believes will serve to strengthen the relationship between the audience and the cinematic world. Of course, that does make sense given the unconventional relationship that exists between Wick and the ballerina, holding the potential to be an interesting addition to the franchise. I can see that happening. Anyway, if there are no changes to the release date, Ballerina is scheduled to release on June 7, 2024. Prime Video is also getting ready to debut Mr. and Mrs. Smith, a TV series based on the 2005 film starring Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. So there's that too. The streaming service said in a press statement that the Donald Glover-fronted series will premiere in the first half of 2024. As for the plot, two strangers, John and Jane, who have given up their identities, will be thrown together as partners in espionage and marriage. Followed by that will be a mystery agency that pairs them up, and in each episode, they embark on a new adventure together. This means they have to work hard to hold everything together when the fissures start to appear, because getting a divorce from this marriage is impossible. It's also worth noting that Phoebe Waller-Bridge from the Netflix series Fleabag was widely speculated to play Mrs. Smith opposite Glover. And although Glover announced the cast in February of 2021, Waller-Bridge apparently left the film in September, owing to creative issues, and has not been seen or heard from since. Then, as of April 2022, Irk signed took charge. So we'll just have to wait and see how this turns out. Also, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, the Prime Video series, will premiere in early 2024, so mark your calendars. Moving on, in a stunning follow-up to the resounding success of Troll, Netflix has officially unveiled the much-anticipated sequel, Troll 2, which promises to expand the immersive world of Norwegian folklore. 
This thrilling announcement comes on the heels of the incredible achievements that the first film achieved, with Troll having won the hearts of audiences all over the world and becoming the most streamed non-English film that Netflix has ever offered to date. Troll 2, which will once again include Roar Udhok in the director's chair, is expected to take the story to even more epic heights as it goes farther into the intersection of legend and reality. The imaginative team that was responsible for this Norwegian masterpiece, which includes the gifted writer Espen Aachen and the producers Espen Horn and Christian Strand Sinkerud, is getting ready to create another entrancing story that will censor on a legendary character from Norwegian fairy tales. And even though filming isn't expected to begin until 2024, there is already very real excitement among fans, creating extremely high hopes for this epic continuation. In other entertainment news, Sylvester Stallone, who is famous for his iconic depiction of Rambo, has no intentions to return for a sixth chapter of the beloved franchise. But don't worry, there's a good reason he isn't. You see, Rambo is one of the most iconic roles in the history of film. Still, Stallone turned down a $34 million deal to play the character again, around the time of Rocky III, citing the lackluster reception that Rambo III received as his reason. According to Stallone, I think it's going to happen. I wanted to do it like a Ken Burns documentary on Vietnam, where you drop young Rambo in there, and he's this outgoing guy, football captain, and then you see why he becomes Rambo. Well, what they want to do is a modern-day story where I pass the torch. That's getting close. Well, he's just not in the mood, it seems. Anyway, even though he made a comeback in 2008's Rambo, and then again in Rambo Last Blood, it appeared as though the character may move from the big screen to the small screen in a new streaming series. So given that Stallone has only recently made his debut in the world of television with Tulsa King, it is unclear what role he will play in the said series. But before you hit that downer, there's something really exciting coming your way. Johnny Depp is making headway in his professional career, despite the turmoil that has been going on in his personal life. He is scheduled to make his on-screen return in the French film Jeanne du Barry, and has spurred discussions about a possible return to the Pirates of the Caribbean film series. Not only that, Depp and filmmaker Tim Burton will work together again on Beetlejuice 2, but this time it will be more of a cameo appearance for Depp, rather than a full-fledged character in the film. On top of that, the movie features an ensemble cast that consists of well-known actors, such as Michael Keaton, Jenna Ortega, and Winona Ryder. How cool does that sound to you? Now this may be a baby step for the pirate actor, but it does make sense given the kind of downs he faced not too long ago. So even though Dev was cleared of all accounts and proven innocent, it's still going to take some time before he can reprise his roles full-time. Now to switch gears a bit, the filmmaker behind the Underworld franchise, Len Wiseman, has stated that there are plans for a reboot in the form of a television series. Although the fact that not every entry in the film franchise received positive reviews from critics, it still managed to amass a loyal following and produce many sequels. Currently, Wiseman is putting his efforts into adapting Underworld for television, and the future of the next sequel will be determined by how well it is welcomed by fans of the original film. Not much to know there for now, but that's still something, right? And oh yeah, the second season of House of the Dragon might start just as suddenly as the first episode of the Game of Thrones prequel series ended. Recent indications indicate that the drama to follow will be more than a match for what has gone before, based on the title and plot specifics of the first episode of the upcoming set of episodes. Additionally, the next installment's premiere episode will be called A Son for a Son, according to a report by Redanian Intelligence. Now for those of you who don't know, the title comes from the letter that Damon writes to Rhaenyra in the novel after she loses her son. Also, wait for it, the letter reads, An eye for an eye, a son for a son, Lucerus will be avenged. Isn't that just so insane? Not to forget, when you consider the strained relationship between the two branches of the Targaryen family and Damon's penchant for retribution, it's easy to see how such a plot could be enticing. Of course, it's not all that matters. Yes, House of the Dragon Season 2 will feature both blood and cheese. There is no confirmed release date for Season 2 of House of the Dragon at this time. Given the length of time needed for editing, the series is more than likely to return next year. And finally, some encouraging news. The Writers Guild and Hollywood Studios are still in negotiations to end a nearly five-month-long strike. Despite expectations of a resolution, the parties announced a pause in talks until Sunday morning. Both sides claim a best and final offer is on the table, a standard legal term that caused some concern among writers. 
one studio executive criticized the term as an unfortunate choice of words that could hinder the deal-making process. Discussions are ongoing to determine if there will be a face-to-face -face meeting between the WGA Negotiating Committee and the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers, led by Carol Lombardini, on Sunday. It remains uncertain whether the CEO leaders, Ted Sarandos of Netflix, Bob Iger of Disney, Donna Langley of NBC Universal, and David Zaslav of Warner Brothers Discovery will attend in person or virtually. The situation is fluid, and both parties will reconvene on Sunday in their continued efforts to reach an agreement and end the strike. So here's to hoping things will finally be resolved and Hollywood will be well and truly back. With that, make sure to hit the bell icon to catch the channel for more exciting updates. And yes, the comments section is all yours, so feel free to write your heart out.